This video is sponsored by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar and heat pump experts in your area, as well as local community solar projects you can become a part of. Well, it happened. Article after article tried to warn us, but we just wouldn't listen. They tried to tell us that the grid wouldn't be able to cope. That mass adoption of the new shiny technology would bring entire communities to their knees, leading to increased carbon emissions as retired coal-fired power plants were brought back online to help manage demand. They said we'd need to be prepared for rolling blackouts as big industry and big businesses, hospitals and government buildings were given priority from whatever power was available. We were told that utility companies would try and preserve as much power as possible by applying to local regulators for permission to turn off electric car charging stations during peak demand periods, that EV owners would be left stranded with no way to charge up as the grid crumbled, breakers popped, and decades of underinvestment cashed in its convertible notes to the universe. And just last week, new reporting from multiple outlets, including the Washington Post, brought our biggest fears alive. The grid is already starting to buckle as it prepares for another record-breaking summer. And it's all our fault. Sorry, wait. It's, it's not EVs? It, it's AI? For at least the last decade, we've heard, often with urgent, exaggerated tones, that electric vehicles will be responsible for the downfall of the electrical grid around the world. We've heard many a naysayer come out and state that the electrical grid simply won't cope with all of that extra demand of all of those extra electric cars charging at once, and that will result in a less clean, more sustained grid that's more prone to brownouts. And at this channel, we've done our best to dispel those myths, highlighting study after study that shows electric vehicles can actually help stabilise the grid rather than bring it to its knees. And a new study from earlier this month from MIT even laid out how careful planning could help cities around the world roll out public charging infrastructure in just such a way that demands on the electrical grid would be reduced overall, lessening or perhaps even eliminating the need for brand new power generation plans. Plants. But today we're going to focus on the thing that is gobbling up massive amounts of grid capacity like it's going out of style. AI. We're going to examine where this sudden demand has come from, how it's impacting the grid, and how we as individuals can help protect ourselves from the worst of any potential grid problems in the near future, while simultaneously transitioning our transportation away from fossil fuels to renewable ones. Before I do though, I just want to reiterate something, so meet me at camera two. I used to assume that everyone understood what AI was short for, artificial intelligence. Until I was speaking with my mother a few weeks ago, and I want to note here, my mother has lived on a farm for the majority of her life, and she gave me a quizzical look and said, but Nikki, What's artificial insemination got to do with computers? So there was a conversation had, and we laughed. And in the context of this video, I most certainly mean artificial intelligence, not anything else that may make use of the same initialism. <laughs> that little confusion cleared up, to the reporting. As the Washington Post reported earlier this month, the US electrical grid is under increased demand in some parts of the union, particularly in areas where there's something of a boom in new factories for clean technology and where large data centres have been built for the seemingly unstoppable march of artificial intelligence. 
In its reporting from March 7th, the Post claims that Georgia's predicted energy use for the coming year is 17 times larger than predictions made of it a few years ago, while states from Arizona to Texas and the Commonwealth of Virginia are all starting to see their grid capacity straining under increased electrical demand. If things continue, we're warned, we could see grids at capacity in Arizona by the end of this decade. And without substantial investment from both public and private sources, our electrical grid future could look very bleak indeed. Given that EVs are often portrayed in large parts of the media as being the biggest potential drain on the grid, we at the channel felt this news required some deconstruction. So first to the AI element and its need for large amounts of power. AI has become a very much buzzword in recent years with its influence felt in a wide range of industries. You probably know it best from ChatGPT and other large language model systems designed to interact with us humans. You probably encounter some form of AI-based system now when you ring up a large call center, at least at first. And AI is now found in pretty much every major social media platform in some way or another. Except maybe Mastodon, which, to my knowledge, because it's open source and non-commercial, is free from such things unless someone nefarious decides to allow a bot onto their Mastodon server. And because of ChatGPT and how terrible it is at giving answers that are anywhere near correct because of the plagiarization of original artistic works by programs like DALI and because large language AI tends to pick up on every single bad thing about us humans and turn it up to 11. I'm talking about things like racism, homophobia and much more. It is pretty common today to think of AI in a very negative light. But AI being a blanket term for any technology that uses machine learning to carry out complex mathematical processes also covers some truly impressive things being made possible by the sheer immense amount of computing power that AI and modern server tech makes possible. AI is helping develop new medical treatments and drugs. It's cutting down on the time to detect and identify new viruses, diagnose cancer early in patients, and develop treatments that we'd previously only dreamt of. AI is helping improve the speed at which new prototyping can take place for all manner of different industries, making and designing products that are better, cheaper, faster, longer lasting, and in the case of energy consumption, more efficient. In the EV world, we're seeing AI facilitate the rapid designing of and testing of brand new battery cell chemistries. And companies like Fortescue-owned WAE Technologies, the company we visited in the UK last year, are also using AI to help model battery degradation, develop new charging strategies, and thanks to digital twins, help predict how a battery will age over time. However good the benefits of AI are, though, outside of chat GPT and AI's more nefarious uses, like generating photographs for political campaigns that imply a candidate is doing something they're not, AI uses a lot of power. How much? Well, in an article by The Verge earlier this year, James Vincent interviewed expert Sasha Lucioni, a researcher at French-American AI firm Hugging Face. And the estimates given for power consumption for a modern AI system is truly mind-blowing. To train a large language model like ChatGPT3, you need about 1.3 gigawatt hours of electricity. That by my calculations, is enough to drive an entry-level Hyundai Ioniq 6 SEL rear-wheel drive long range with 18-inch wheels in optimal conditions, more than 5.46 million miles, or enough to travel between the Earth and the Moon 11 and a bit times. And as Lucioni noted, one of the things that she and her colleagues have been working hard to do is to estimate more accurately the power consumption of an AI system after it has been trained and is in general use by the public. That sadly is a lot harder 
to figure out. But suffice to say, multiple AI systems running multiple training models for one company eats a lot of power. And that's before we even look at things like in-industry AI being used for training things like semi-autonomous driver assistance features. Even Tesla, which has made phenomenal gains in energy efficiency versus computational power by designing and building its own computer hardware in-house specifically for autopilot, still consumes power at a mind-blowing rate. In September 2022, Tesla noted that its project Dojo drew more than 2.3 megawatts of instantaneous power before it tripped a local power substation. And look, I'm not trying to hate on Tesla either. Tesla's approach, making chipsets designed to be as efficient as possible, is a phenomenal and noble goal. And Tesla has deployed a massive amount of solar generation in order to help offset the massive power consumption of Project Dojo and its data centers in general. Many companies are doing the same thing, but while established, proven companies like Tesla, Google, Microsoft and Apple are more than capable of and regularly do deploy grid generation to supplement or entirely offset their energy use, many startups don't because they don't have that much money. AI then is consuming a lot of power. There are currently an estimated 67,000 AI startups around the world, with one quarter of them located in the US. Now granted, not all of them are pulling major amounts of power, but if we add up all of those companies and their respective power drains, even for companies with modest power drains, we have issues. And it's no wonder we're starting to see the grid suffer in parts of the US where local governments are operating with statutes that are more pro-business and less pro-worker. Again, not trying to hate on any state in particular, but it's worth noting that states with strong worker protections, rules that require livable working wages and tougher rules concerning health and safety are usually the states that companies are less likely to establish large data centers and factories in. Because at the end of the day, if those companies can establish a facility somewhere where it's cheaper to operate and there are fewer protections for workers and restrictions on what's OK and what's not OK, those very same companies get to lower their costs and increase their profits. Workers be damned. That same kind of business environment is also why we're starting to see the very same areas that AI is flocking to becoming home to new factories for clean technology. And this is where EVs do play a more substantial part in that massive grid demand. Areas where new factories are being built for refining raw materials, for battery packs, building battery packs and building EVs themselves all face potential future power problems. Many of those new facilities are being built to take advantage of federal tax credits for domestic EV production. Many are doing it to take advantage of similar benefits for clean energy jobs and new microprocessor manufacturing. And all of these companies are all flocking to similar areas of the country. As I said previously, some are investing in their local grid and looking for on-site energy generation potential, especially in the automotive sector and clean energy sector, where the carbon footprint and cradle-to-grave carbon emissions are very, very much scrutinised as a whole. But it doesn't matter what's going on with generation if the grid itself is struggling to transmit the power. Which brings me back to the infrastructure problem. Sure, the US federal government under its current administration is setting out a massive tranche of spending designed to improve the US electrical grid, a grid which I might note has suffered under decades of neglect from both Republican and Democratic presidents. Those upgrades to the grid are already taking place, but they have many, many more years of upgrades to go through existing funding before the grid is stable. Although the continual back and forth on Capitol Hill between two very bitterly opposed political parties does very little to help ease the rollout of new grid upgrades. And of course, 
All of those new facilities also require people to work at them, meaning the towns and cities adjacent to wherever those new facilities are being built will also need expansion and grid capabilities for new homes. And that leaves us where? As electric vehicle enthusiasts, owners and clean energy advocates, I'm guessing that, like me, you want to know that your electric car can continue to function and can be charged using clean, zero-emission electricity. There's certainly some fear, too, that we may face a point in the near future where legislators try to control EV charging in order to ease the strain on the grid, because no matter what the actual reason behind something is, there will always be a political sacrificial lamb. At the top of the list is, of course, working to become more energy independent by investing in your own energy generation and off-grid or grid-tied energy storage. And that's where today's video sponsors, Energy Sage, come in. Energy Sage helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers across the US and now heat pump specialists in select markets who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing photovoltaic solar panels, help you pick a grid-tied energy storage system, help you join a community solar program, or in fact get a heat pump installed. I used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable and even put us in touch with a truly amazing credit union that allowed us to finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. And because Energy Sage offers the ability to join community solar programs, you can even invest in renewable energy generation if your home isn't suitable for on-roof generation or you're not a homeowner. Follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free and no obligation services and get the ball rolling today. If you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we will get a small referral fee, so you'll also be helping the channel too. Of course, having grid tied energy storage generation and on site backup is a great way to go if you're an EV owner. And the wonderful thing about renewable energy is that it allows for the democratization of energy and the decentralization of energy. Both of these things not only give you, the individual, more power and control over your energy and where you use it, but they also help alleviate peaks and troughs in grid demand while simultaneously greening up the local grid in your area. The next way to help and to be prepared is to take part in time of use charging. While it's fair to note that AI data centers and large factories operate around the clock, it's well known that most power grids have a much lower demand at nighttime. Charging at nighttime will help your grid to reduce peak time energy use and most likely save you money too, at least if you have enrolled in a time of use tariff. After that, being much more energy conscious about your day-to-day -day energy use will also help. The standard things, turning off computer equipment when you're not using them, planning to use heavy load items when you're generating your own power or through nighttime tariffs, all helps. And of course, if you're looking to buy a new EV, why not consider getting one with some form of V2L or V2G capability? Being able to get through a brownout with your own EV is, frankly, a boss-level feature that, in my humble opinion, all EVs should now come as standard with. Finally, you need to get active. Talk to friends and family and encourage them to take steps to generate their own renewable energy or have grid-tied or off-grid energy storage. Talk to your local politicians, your local energy company, and find out what the plans are for upgrading the grid and installing more renewable energy capacity where you live. And if there are new projects planned for your neighborhood or region, attend those planning meetings. Ask the tough questions about grid capacity upgrades and what those businesses are planning on doing to ensure their shiny new AI facility or production plant isn't going to cause headaches for the local grid. Oh, and register to vote. Register to vote, do your research on the candidates and become politically active. Some political candidates want to do whatever the fossil fuel industry wants them to in exchange for money. It might not solve the big issue, which is that the electrical grid needs upgrading, and those upgrades need to come with diversified, decentralised power generation that's owned and operated by communities, not corporations. And when I say get active, I really mean it. 
Ask candidates tough questions and don't assume that the guy, gal or non-binary individual that represents your party is always going to have your best interests at heart. Sometimes they need a metaphorical push too. Thanks for joining me today and if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people that help make this channel possible by funding it through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, $10.08 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Ralph Koenig, Mr. Eldritch, Dwayne Edgar, and Corey Singletray. To join our list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at the address is listed below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store link in the down below as well. This month, we are celebrating wrangling Evie Fudd with a fantastic t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon and as always, keep evolving!